Hey, San Antonio. Uh, well, this is Jeff Castillo. We came down here. Uh, this is a memorial has been set up here for a uh, fallen officer, uh, Mr. Moreno. He did pass. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we make this to where our city is now uh, going to acknowledge the crisis that we're in here. and We need to try to help our first responders. So we need to ask uh, the mayor of our city to, to meet with our coalition of veterans and citizens. Uh, we do have a crisis here. You know, something's happened in our city. It's never happened before. We're not, not going to put a finger on this. I mean, this is becoming a more horrific. We have a mental health crisis here. You know, for this type of spontaneousness, not to be evil, but to be a production that it seems like it's a process that was created here on these men not having, um, or being fully functional. I can't see someone just coming out of their car and killing somebody, but you know, they did say that this young man had been in the judicial system, whether he was any on any type of you know, issue as far as what made him do something is horrific, you know, and this is something we need to look at because, you know, we've become the most violent city in America, you know, and uh, we can't keep steering away from this matter of fact, and I want you guys to call your representatives, call your senators. I got a lot of these kids coming out of prison. They're not functional. You know, they came out of the juvenile systems, foster care. They were put on these psychotropic drugs. And this is the danger I've been trying to tell you that this is going to happen here. This is going to happen. They're not going to stop this. They made a mistake. And if we don't find a way of stabilizing this, as far as getting these kids coming out, I've got them sleeping down here under the bridge. That We went down there to talk to them to see how we could help them. They are not functional. And to see this sort of creating what the violence is, this is a pandemic in America. This isn't just here. So it had to have happened somehow. We need to get to the root of that. So please call our mayor and ask him to have a town hall on the mental health crisis that we're, we're dealing with that has our first responders in danger. This needs to be addressed. All right, please. Thank you. And that was uh, something that's really, really important here. That's happened in our city and in honor of this young man and his end of service, we need to awaken and start looking at what, you know, what's been going on and what we had advocated, what we did in session and try to get acknowledgement that these, these processes are making our city the most violent city in America. You know, and they did address this when we went last year to the city and tried to meet with Ivy Taylor. And uh, she wouldn't meet with our group as far as our case study, but she did in January form this group. Let me let you uh, listen to these guys. The initiative fighting to curb violence here in San Antonio is targeting crime throughout the entire city. And the results are in tonight on the effectiveness of the Violent Crimes Task Force. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Sharon Coe with the latest numbers. Under a new partnership by city, county, and federal law enforcement, fighting back against criminals has proven to be very successful. The Violent Crime Task Force is an intelligence-driven initiative focused on individuals engaged in criminal activity. From officers on the streets to behind the scenes, law enforcement is pinpointing the most violent criminals. I think because of this task force here, I think we've been able to hold the tide. And I think without this task force, it could have gotten much worse. Since launching the Violent Crimes Task Force in January, there have been nearly a thousand arrests and more than a hundred firearms recovered. The task force also took drugs off the streets and seized more than $230,000. We plan to prosecute these violent, dangerous individuals to ensure that their punishment truly fits their crime and that their case does not fall through the crack. A proposal is now in the works to ask city council to help expand the task force with additional officers. A plan law enforcement officials hope gets council's full support. We're happy to be of service to our community in any way that we can, and I think this is just the first of many, many joint operations that you'll see. Sharon Co. Ken's 5 Eyewitness News. These guys came together to create this task force, but they weren't on point. Uh, the mental health crisis as far as our city's violence, family uh, violence, child abuse, murder, suicide, is being created from what we had advocated for and we're in the session in Washington and the session here in San Antonio. This is truly happening, not just in San Antonio, it's a pandemic throughout the United States. 90% of the jails 
have a mental health crisis, you can call and ask if they're using these psychotropics that's creating this dysfunction. You did hear the young man, as far as they had taken this young man's life, came out of the prison as to what his mother said with the mental health crisis. This is happening, and I want you to look at what, uh, what I brought to you. This was a work that I had did, and let me, let me let you watch this. Next is Two Bears. Mayor, City Council, I want to thank you, Chief. God bless you. Uh, I want to object to this. I've been a research analysis for Veterans for Education Reform for quite a few years with the government and uh, worked in different areas of injustice with Dr. Michael Gilbert. President Obama last year at our American Legion Conference gave the $75 million for police brutality. That's police brutality. And to watch it, I don't think we as citizens need to have that impressed upon us. I had formed a coalition or worked to trying to form a coalition in San Antonio of veterans and citizens to start monitoring what we need to do in our Angel Eyes program. You know, we made the same mistake when we put the police in the schools and we're addressing that yesterday on CNN and I'd said some comments and actually had gotten on there. Uh, if we keep going this way, you know, we're really, really endangering our citizens. I don't think we need to be watching cameras. I think we need to have our veterans that suffer that mental health crisis because they're at the American Legion. I broke the code of silence and I said the most dangerous member in America today is my brother veteran, not wanting to accept that he too suffers from PTSD and he's coming back to America and is becoming a peace officer, a correction officer. Whatever it is, we need to monitor that before we move forward on spending our citizens' money on what's happening in the schools today. You saw that young lady get tossed by that officer. But if we had mentors in there to where we're addressing this injustice, that would be more civil. So it would be very, very uncivil for you to even think of taking our taxpayer dollars to monitor police brutality. And that is now working with the new group that the president started this month, it's law enforcement leaders to reduce crime and incarceration. I hope you're not in supporting crime. I hope you're not. So I'm going to say a prayer and I beg that you guys consider what your actions are here today. You cannot take our money to monitor police brutality. There has to be a resolve here by getting to the point the police shootings are being identified as veterans. We need to help these veterans by making sure we're monitoring and putting some type of, some kind of test or something here, citizens, to monitor what we're seeing. What we did with Tommy Atkinson when the, Dr. Gilbert had the pre-entry at the magistrates. We did this, it was done. And you guys aren't a part of what's happening here. You know, it seems like you guys are supported and spending our dollars instead of getting it resolved. So I pray that we can bring angel eyes into the city's light of understanding of where we're heading tomorrow. Okay, God bless you guys. While many of us would be nervous and scared while facing the possibility of life in prison, David Moses acted amused and bored at his sentencing today. With a chuckle, a laugh, and yawn after yawn, David Moses acted strangely at his sentencing this morning, appearing to fall asleep in his chair not once, but twice. He gave me the impression that he thought this was a game. There was just no expression of remorse whatsoever for his actions. Last month, a jury convicted Moses and Katilla Nash of first-degree murder in the 2010 killing of 81-year-old Dorothy Sessions. She was inside her Northeast Bakersfield home cooking dinner when the teenagers broke in to burglarize the house. When she confronted them, they brutally beat her to the point of being unrecognizable. She was such a caring, she had such a gentle spirit about her. I know that if there were more people like Pauline Sessions, we wouldn't be having trials like this. Moses was on juvenile probation when he killed Sessions. Prosecutor David Wilson says Moses suffered physical, verbal, and emotional abuse growing up, leading to a lengthy criminal history, including sexually assaulting his sister, then a developmentally disabled cousin, and seven other children while he was in a group home. While Sessions' family said they hoped to one day see her again in heaven, 
Moses's attorney asked the judge for hope as well, in the form of a possibility for parole. To give him that hope for the next 25 years, uh, that he may have an opportunity to be returned to society. Instead, the judge sentenced Moses to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Uh, Mr. Moses received the punishment he deserved. Frankly put, he's just a dangerous individual, and there's only one other place. There's only one place to put him, and that's in the penitentiary for the rest of his life. As for the Nash sisters, Katilla Nash's sentencing has been continued to next month. That's also when her sister Angelique Nash, who was the lookout during the burglary, will begin the retrial of her case. In the studio, I'm Christine Den, 23 ABC. Now, them young men are going to spend the rest of their life. As to we had won the, the matter here in Texas in the foster care system, and the, the senior judge Janice Graham Jacks ruled the psychotropics were making members not functional. Uh, in the 84th session, we had taken our case study to ask them to include what would have showed in the report closer to home that I had brought you guys earlier in the year that the recidivism rate was being caused by chemically altering these children's minds. And as they grow, they recidivate in the adult system. They're coming out not functional. This dehumanizing process as far as Who's creating this? This is done as a best practice. We have judges signing orders to put people, young children, on psychotropics. This is what was bothersome and why I'm still here today because my son's one of those prisoners that got locked into this national process. They made a lot of money of our taxpayers paying for this. And what I had said, we don't want to see this. And I, you know, I might have to pray for Chief McManus because he had to see this man get killed. I don't know how anybody would want to see that. And that's why I'm going to ask you to, to please, please look at this shooting here. San Antonio College in San Antonio. I don't know if there's some kind of shooting going on. I just wanted to bring you guys a live report. Um, this is part of what's happening in our city today. So you know, we're looking at what's going on right here. We've got a lot of officers here on this issue. Yeah, hi, this is Fidel Castillo. You know, I've been an advocate with you guys, and we tried to tell the city uh, when Ivy Taylor was trying to say that uh, we were having a gang problem. We didn't have a gang problem, and we tried to tell them we have a mental health problem. You know, what's happening here today is shocking, you know, and this is where we need to call a town hall. We want uh, Mayor Nuremberger to have a town hall on the mental health crisis. This is how we're going to make our community safe. We're going to not, not keep investing or promoting gang violence in our city. We have a mental health crisis here today, and this is blatant here. These are officers that have been shot, and we have people out here in our city that need help. So please call the mayor, tell them you want to hold a town hall on this issue. This is a crisis in our city, and we're not addressing it. And it has our city as the most violent city in America. So please call the mayor. And that there being what we're asking our new mayor, let's see if he's true blue, as far as back in the blue and, 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 and looking at calling the town hall as we requested and we're going to continue requesting over where this violence is coming from. We're not going to steer away from the facts. These are facts of the matter. You're seeing this happen in our city and it's so, so, so important. You know, those they all marched with back in the blue that you call and you ask, are we still using psychotropics to make our community safe? You know, they had that uh, um, that deal there with, uh, with the chief there at McDonald's, and I thought this was sort of shocking. So let San me let Antonio's you watch what he had to say. And remember, there's kids here. We're who he calls coffee with the cops. Haters. And his this comments is what he come said. after one of his officers was killed this week, and another faces a long road to recovery. Officers Miguel Moreno and Julio Cavazos were trying to stop two car burglary suspects last Thursday when one of them opened fire. Officer Moreno was shot in the head and died from his injuries the next day. Officer Cavazos pulled Moreno out of the line of fire and shot back after he was hit in the chest. At an event this weekend, Chief William McManus says the hate needs to stop. 
I'm angry at the police haters. I'm sick of the police haters. We protect them, we defend them, and they give us the big F you. And I'm sick of it. The San Antonio police have not released details about Officer Moreno's funeral. The Officer Down Memorial page says the number of officers killed nationwide this year is higher than last. Take a look at the numbers. 65 officers have died in the line of duty in 2017. That's an 18% jump over last year. 24 died from gunfire, a 20% jump from 2016. For him to say that is, is a sickness that we don't need in our city, but at least he's addressing the sickness, and we can be it on point now. This is truly, truly happening today, and it is a sickness. But let's get to the root of that sickness. You see that they created a task force, and we have that task force today not, not acknowledging the need that we have and why I had worked, because my veterans suffered the same process. The Department of uh, Veterans Affairs prescribe psychotropics for PTSD and you know to put the lifelines out and to go in a test to as to the matters of fact of why these men even on the reviews I did on uh, working with uh, then it was Cory Booker did the Redeemer Act back in 2013 and um, this last no this that was 2015 this last session 2000 in 17, he had the Mercy Act, and it showed that the juvenile systems, but the, what they were saying was because of solitary confinement. And you can go on my, my, my uh, YouTube page, uh, Stop Solitary Confinement, and that'll show you more of what the truth is. What they're saying as far as their national campaign, and they launched last year there in Washington, I had objected trying to say, that the mental health crisis in our jails is because of solitary confinement, only because we have, as a best practice, the use of psychotropics that, are, that they say makes our community safe. If our veterans have PTSD, as far as the shooter in Florida that went to the FBI and told them the courts are making him take psychotropics and he doesn't like the feeling as far as, you know, even what I had brought you guys earlier, the veteran that had did the shooting in uh, Dallas, here in Texas, you know, this is a, uh, this is all happening, but it's transpiring into where the the truth can never be, be um, the truth can never be hidden. Those are part of what Indigenous people try to tell you, and why I'm trying to share this love with with our citizens. On we are the citizens of that they're supposed to be upholding the oath to protect. And that's why I need you guys to please, please, you know, reach out to, uh, and see if he's really true blue and whether we will get the city we deserve. <clears throat> I'm gonna work on some resolutions, you know, this last week here, they had the LULAC National Convention. I had put the resolutions in there. So every one of your representatives have been informed as to those that were there at the conference. And you can call them, you know, and ask them, are you guys going to address this, this mental health problem that we have being caused by what the judge ruled? Psychotropics are making members not functional. You saw them young men that are going to do life. 2010, I had a little boy and I went to uh, juvenile judge Lisa Jarrett uh, she made the decision to bound him over. He's doing life. He killed his father. This is our city. <clears throat> and we won't be able to bring peace unless we come together as the citizens and make these so-called people that uh, are supposed to be upholding uh, their duties. And this is what's really important. They have a duty. They've committed. They've taken an oath. And we need to hold them to that oath. I don't know where... Uh, former Mayor Ivy Taylor thought it's important to give 22 million to body cameras to watch this. Because, I mean, I don't know how Chief would ever want to watch an officer being killed and not get to the point of matter. 
I don't know where our city is being managed to invest in $50 million to keep drugging people and building a mental health center there when I showed you at the corner of Commerce and Frio, and you can go online, it's under Psychotropics, the mental health crisis in the USA. That's $50 million to continue using psychotropics in the jail that the judge ruled for the children in Texas as unconstitutional. Are we letting these people calling themselves our leaders create this to where we're having to endure becoming and even labeled as what I showed you in the, uh, the last show, the most violent city in America and we have a task force that's not getting at what the judge said psychotropics are making children not functional. This recidivism was in the report. They covered it up in the session. I gave my case study to Senator Menendez because my son was one of those kids back in 2009 when we suffered the highest rate of recidivism in the report and nobody said nothing. Now the truth of the matter, they're coming out and this is truly, truly happening. There's no place for them to go. And that's why I ask you to, you know, ask to support our veterans and even our first responders. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, I tried to, when I went to the mayor, and you watch Breaking the Code of Silence, and that's also posted on YouTube. And we asked her to meet with us on the work I was doing with President Obama's. Uh, the final reports are in the 21st Century uh, Task Force, Policing Task Force. And... You know, we identified that if we're having veterans that are officers suffering from PTSD, we can use that, uh, that support line by creating stabilization centers. So I had authored the Eagle Eye Stabilization Centers, and Native Americans were healing veterans using CBD oil over the effects of the damage of psychotropics. And it was working until the DEA decided to make it a class one narcotic. And that's why I thought, well, let's get a stabilization center to where she diverted money <clears throat> again over the east side where she was promoting gang violence. She was promoting it. You can watch it on all the news. And this is the good part about this. The media is caught. You know, they're promoting violence in our city. Watch what they, they push on you. And you need to call them and tell them you don't want to keep seeing what's being created through the system. And then you're justifying it, you know, even what you heard the chief say, you know, in front of kids. He's sick of this? Well, sir, if you're sick, we can't have you leading our men and thinking that our community is going to be safe. So we're going to make a change here, and I'm working on a resolution, uh, but I need you to call this mayor, this new mayor, and let's see if he's true blue. I pray he is, but he'd have to do something as far as why we're, we've managed be, to become the most violent city in America. So I want a cleansing, I want a, a healing in our city. And you know, natives have always worked at peace and to share, you know, to share love and, and uh, you know, compassion. And you know, that's why I've, I'm gonna change my, my ways here this year and I need your help that we're unified and we're gonna make a change here you know, for, for not just the kids, not the indigent, this is the bad part about it, they're indigent children. So let me let you uh, share our love as far as the indigenous people, and God bless you, San Antonio, and you know, God bless America, okay? Please.